Good morning. I am Dr. Ravi Amadaradi, Professor and Head of the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, SZ Balekundri Institute of Technology, Belagavi. Today we shall continue the discussion on bipolar junction transistor. Last class we have seen, right, we have discussed about the significance of the term BZT. BZT means bipolar junction transistor. The term bipolar indicates the involvement of the holes and the electrons in the conduction of the current. That is why the term bipolar, bi means two, polar means the charge carriers. So, here in the BZT, the current is contributed by both the holes and electrons. Junction, the term junction, it represents the, since the bipolar junction transistor is having two junctions, one is the between the emitter and uh, the base, another between the collector and the base. So, that is why the term the junction is being used here. The third term that reflects that is transistor. So, that is the me transistor means it is transfer plus register or transfer of resistance. So, uh, the here the whenever the AC signal is applied across the transistor, the AC signal is transferred from low resistance region to the high resistance region. Here as you can see here in a PNP transistor, the P plus that it acts as the emitter and N minus it acts as the base and P layer it acts as the collector here. So, usually the emitter base junction that is input junction is forward bias and the output junction that is collector base junction is reverse bias. So, when the input junction is forward bias, so that will provide a low resistance region and when the collector junction is reverse bias, it provides the high resistance. So, in addition to this, whenever an AC signal is applied across the input junction, this AC signal is transferred from low resistance region that is emitter base junction to the high resistance region that is the collector base region that is why the name transistor here. And also we have seen the BZT bipolar junction transistor it consists of three layers the that is uh, uh, emitter layer, base layer and collector layer. In fact, there are two types of BZTs are there one is PNP transistor another is NPN transistor here. So, the P if you consider the case of the P and P transistor, the P plus it acts as the emitter, N minus it behaves as the base layer whereas, the P will be the collector here. The as the compared to the emitter and uh, the uh, uh, collector region, the middle region is very very thin compared to other region whereas, the P plus layer which forms the emitter it is uh, having more width compared to other. Whereas, the P layer which is nothing but a collector, it is having the width in between that of the emitter and base. In addition to this, you need to note the uh, doping concentration of each layer here. The plus indicates the P layer that is emitter layer is heavily doped and N minus that is B, uh, base layer it is lightly doped whereas, P that is the collector layer which is the moderately doped. That means, the doping concentration of the P layer, it is in between that of the emitter and the collector here, emitter and base. And also we have seen in the last class, the operation of the bipolar junction transistor. As you can see in this slide, the we have a, a P N P transistor, the P it forms the emitter, N region or N layer it, it is nothing but the base region and the P layer the extreme right hand side P layer it forms the collector here. And also you can see that the emitter that is nothing but P layer is connected to the positive terminal of V and the with reference to base and similarly the collector that is nothing but P layer it is connected to the negative terminal of VCC with reference to the base. Therefore, the emitter base junction is forward bias. Similarly, the, the, uh, the however, the collector base junction is reverse bias. As you know that, as you uh, noted down in the semiconductor junction theory, the whenever the uh, the junction, the uh, any, any device is either forward bias or reverse bias, there will be a depletion region uh, exist across this. 
So, as you know that the emitter based junction is forward bias and the collector based junction is reverse bias. So, usually the thickness of the depletion layer exists across the collector base, base junction is more compared to that uh, uh, that uh, exist across the emitter base junction. So, therefore, as you know that we have a P n P layer here. In P layer, the majority charge carriers are holes. In n layer, the majority charge carriers are the electrons here. So, therefore, whenever right we connect the P layer to the positive terminal of the V e. So, these electrons the sorry the uh, holes they get tripled by the V e positive terminal of the V e they will be diffused into they will cross over the depletion region and moved into the n layer. When these holes from they move from p layer to n layer they some of these that is about 5 percent of these holes they recombine with the uh, electrons of the base layer and that will contribute the base current and remaining 90 percent. So, they will move across or they will diffuse from the base layer into the collector re region. So, because you know that once the majority carriers of the P layer that is holes they when they diffuse into the N layer they act like a minority carriers. Therefore, as you know that there is a depletion uh, region existing across this particular collector base junction and this and due to that depletion reason there will be a uh, potential barrier exist and this potential barrier it will be, uh, be uh, favor these ele electrons or these holes to move from the base layer to the collector uh, layer and therefore, that will contribute to the, the collector current. So, and also in apart from that. So, we have also seen some of the BJT voltages and current that is existing in the device. Here as you can see that this is the symbolic symbol of for the PNP transistor having the emitter base collector and also the arrow it indicates the emitter current, base current and the collector current. So, as you can note on from this symbol PNP right the I is nothing but the I B plus I C. Similarly, if you apply KVL to this, we will get uh, uh, the V e B equal to V e C plus V c B. From this, you can derive that V e C equal to V e B minus V c B here. Similarly, for NPN transistor, you can see that right. So, we have emitter terminal, base terminal and collector terminal with the, the arrow indicating the various currents that is emitter current and base current and the collector current. So, and also you know that the voltage existing between the base to emitter it is represented by VBE and that between the base and collector represented by VBCC and the voltage appearing across the collector to emitter it is represented as VCE. If you apply KVL to this, so we will get VBE equal to VCE plus VBC and from that we can derive deduce that uh, you can note on that VC equal to minus uh, VBC plus VBE. And also in symbol we are noted that the arrow whatever arrow you can see that that represents the emitter here. From this uh, the symbol of PNP you can see that the arrow is over here. So, therefore, this terminal represents the emitter whereas, in case of the NPN transistor. So, here this terminal is having arrow. So, therefore, this terminal is uh, called as the emitter and always you should note that. So, always this arrow it will be towards uh, N layer. So, in the case of this P and P transistor this is the emitter is P and base is N and the collector is P. Therefore, now the emitter current it will be from a, the emitter to base that is towards N region. Similarly, in the case of the N P N the we have the uh, N acts as the emitter P will be the base region whereas, the N will be the collector region and therefore, here you can see that the current the emitter current it is towards once again from base to emitter that is that is P to N here that is. So, that is what you can note on from this slide and also we are noted down the semiconductor junction either it can have a forward bias or a reverse bias. So, there will be a combination of the forward bias re and the reverse bias case. So, depending upon the suitable combination of this the forward bias and reverse bias the BJT can operate in either of active region, cutoff region and saturation region. If the both the junction that is elect, uh, the 
uh, emitter based junction and collector based junction are reverse bias then the transistor is said to be cut off region. If the both the junction emitter based junction and collector based junctions are forward bias then transistor is said to be saturation region. In case the emitter junction the em emitter based junction that is called as input junction is forward bias and the collector based junction if it is reverse bias then transistor is said to be in active region and depending upon the which region it is operate the bipolar junction transistor is operating. So, we can use either the BZT either as an amplifier or logical switch usually whenever the transistor operates in active region it is being used as an amplifier in case of the logic switch. So, we, we can make use of either the cutoff region or saturation region. So, today at the end of the session you will be able to uh, solve some problems related to bipolar junction transistors and also you can able to note down the differences or three basic configuration of single stage uh, bipolar junction um, uh, junction transistor amplifier that is BZT amplifier and also we will able to you will be able to analyze the common base characteristics of the BZT. So, and at the end of the session you can we shall see how the BZT acts as an amplifier in using the common base configuration. So, now let us see the ok from this figure we have a, a PNP transistor. So, that is what uh, that you can note on from the emitter terminal here. So, emitter uh, terminal the arrow is always towards uh, the N type. So, therefore, this transistor given transistor is P n p here. So, this P acts as the emitter and uh, this N it acts as the base and the P other P layer the extreme P layer acts as the collector here. So, from this you can note on that emitter base junction is forward bias because P layer that is emitter that is connected to positive terminal of this supply with reference to the base. Similarly, the collector base junction is reverse bias because collector that is nothing but uh, the another P layer which will be connected to negative terminal of other supply here. So, therefore, emitter base junction that is input junction is forward bias whereas, the output junction that is collector base junction is reverse bias. So, uh, from this uh, uh, figure right if you apply the uh, the Kirchhoff's current law we can note on that I equal to I B plus I C there. So, therefore, if you can derive this equation you will be noting down that is one is from this equation from this if you apply the Kirchhoff's current law we will get the input current equal to that is the emitter current equal to I B plus I C there. So, here we know that the one parameter called as the alpha D C. So, it is nothing but the ratio of the I C by I E that means, it is also called as in ok it is called as common base ok uh, current gain or D C current gain. So, here the current gain as you know that it is a ratio of current by current is it not gain means it is a ratio of output by input here. In this common base configuration please note that the collector current acts as the output current whereas, the emitter current acts as the input current therefore, alpha DC that is nothing but the common base DC uh, current gain it is the ratio of the collector current to the emitter current here. So, therefore, from this we can see that. So, the I C ok is equal to alpha times of D C that is D C current gain into the emitter current here. So, from this if you substitute over here what I will get alpha D C this into I E, I E is nothing but the summation of the base current right plus I C there. So, therefore, from this I can write it as alpha D C into I B plus alpha D C into I C there. So, therefore, if I can rearrange this equation we will get I C. So, this term I can take it to the left left side. So, this will become alpha minus alpha D C into I C there is equal to alpha 
d c into i b there. So, therefore, here I can take i c common there. So, therefore, from this i c is into 1 minus alpha d c. So, that equals to what the alpha d c into i b there. So, therefore, from this I can say that i c will be equal to alpha d c divided by 1 minus alpha d c. So, into i b there or this I can rewrite as beta d c right into i b. So, where beta d c is what is beta d c here? Beta d c is nothing but it is common emitter emitter current d c current gate d c current gate. Okay. Once again here, this is a once again a, a current gain similar to the alpha d c, but thing is that here once again as you told that it is current gain, it is a once again ratio of the output current by the input current in case of common emitter configuration. In if common emitter configuration means emitter is common to both input and output. So, here input is I c the collector and output is the base, therefore beta d c it is equal to the ratio of I c by I b. So, therefore, so this from this we can say that so beta d c is equal to is nothing but alpha d c divided by 1 minus alpha d c. So, that is what we can make a note of this. So, this is what okay, uh, we will get the common emitter d c current gain in terms of common base d c current that is alpha d c there. So, now let us see let us solve some of the one or two problems using this. So, first problem statement it says that calculate the i c and i e for a transistor that has alpha d c that is common emitter uh, common base d c current gain that is and uh, that is equal to 0.98 and the base current is equal to 100 micro amperes. So, we need to determine the value of beta d c or h f e of the transistor here. Now, let us see the mainly uh, let us solve this problem right. So, we shall see what exactly the solution for this problem. So, uh, what is asked here? We are need to given here. So the solution is okay. We need to. What is the given? Given is alpha DC is equal to 0.98. That is the common uh, base current gain and uh, IB that is base current is given as how much that is 100 micro amperes. So, using these two data we need to calculate the I c okay, then I e okay, and then the beta d c or h f e there. It is also called as h f e. This we need to calculate. So, therefore, what is the answer answer i c we know that in terms of alpha d c and i b here. So, therefore, it can be given as alpha d c by 1 minus alpha d c into the i b there. So, from this we can say that this is nothing but 0 0.98 okay, divided by 1 minus 0 0.98 okay, into the i b, i b is 100 micro amperes. So, if we substitute this we can able to get the answer that that is approximately this will be equal to uh, this is uh, 0 0.98 divided by 0 0.02 this is into 100 micro amperes. So, this amounts to be so this is 49 okay, into 4900 micro amperes or otherwise I can say it as 4.9 milli amperes. So, that is the answer for the collector current. Similarly, I e, I e 
you can note down as i is nothing but what the input current it is summation of i b plus i see there i b is given there i b is it is given as 100 microamperes plus okay i c i c is calculated as 4.9 milliamperes so this comes about this is uh, 5 milliampere 4.9 this will be around uh, 0 0.09 this will be around 4.9 this is 100 uh, microamperes i b is 100 i c is calculated as 4.9 milliampere so this comes around 4.9 into you can say this is nothing but uh, in terms of the 100 I can calculate as a 10 raise to minus 3. So, this will be how much? This will be 0 0.1. So, 0 0.1 means it took 0 0.1 milliampere, this will be 5 milliampere. So, therefore, we can say that I is almost equal to I C there. And uh, finally, the beta D C we need to find out. We can simply make use of either using this alpha D C by 1 minus alpha D C. Okay. So, so, this is nothing but, so if you substitute there, okay, 0 0.981 minus 0 0.98, this comes around, how much? It will be 49. So, that is what you are getting. So, therefore, using this, uh, okay, solution, we get I C equal to 4.9, I equal to, naturally, it is 4.5 uh, milliampere, we are getting, and beta D C is nothing but the 49 there. So, that is what you can see here. So, I C is calculated using uh, this, we have got it 4.0 milliampere, I is uh, 5 milliampere and beta D C is 49 here. Now, let us see the another problem here. Okay. So, once again here, the, uh, the statement, problem statement is calculate alpha D C and beta D C for the transistor, if the collector current is 1 milliampere and the base current is 25 microampere. We need to determine the new base current gain to give I C equal to 5 milliampere. Now, let us see right how we can able to solve this particular problem. So, what will be the solution here? Now, let us note on what are the given things, what is uh, okay given, given is, so is uh, I C the collector current is given as the 1 milliampere and uh, so, and I B, the base current is given as 25 microamperes. Okay. And uh, we need to determine alpha D C to determine alpha D C okay. and beta D C. Okay. And uh, so, after that, we need to determine the new beta D C. So, therefore, beta D C nu okay, for that uh, for a collector current of 5 milliampere. So, this is for collector current of 5 milliampere. There. So, to get alpha D C, what is alpha D C? You know, this is nothing but the, the I C ratio of output current that is collector current to the input current. So, but I C is given, I E is not given, but however, I B is given. Therefore, what I can do is I C divided by this, I can write it as I B plus I C there. So, therefore, I C is given as 1 milliampere. Okay. This is 1 milliampere and this I B. So, this is uh, 25 microamperes plus how much? This is so, this will will get around this is 1 milliampere and 1.025 milliampere. Similarly, using this alpha DC, so that is what you can see here. So, what we have done, okay, we have used either this IC by IB there. So, this comes around 0.9. 976 there. Similarly, we can use the beta. Once you get beta, 
So, right once you know alpha DC, so you can directly write alpha DC or otherwise you can use the ratio of I C by I B there. So, I C you know it is 1 milli ampere and uh, base current you know that is uh, 25 micro amperes. So, therefore, this I can write as 1 milli ampere divided by this is 0 0.025 milli ampere. This comes around 40 as the common current. Common ok. So, emitter DC current again that is what we are getting. So, finally, using this data. So, finally, what you need to do beta DC nu. So, therefore, beta DC nu will be as you know that this is once again that uh, we have used ok. So, from uh, beta D C nu for I C equal to this. So, therefore, beta D C is nothing but I C by I B there ok. So, beta D C is I C by I B. So, for I C 5 milli ampere. So, what is I B it remains same ok. You will get you will able to get the answer using this. So, that is comes around the so, this is how you can able to solve the ok the two problems related to both transistor current and uh, voltage equation there. Now, let us see some configuration of the bipolar junction transistor. So, as you know that the uh, in uh, the two port networks they, they are having two input ports and uh, two output ports. So, but however, the bipolar junction transistor is having three terminals in order to fit this uh, bipolar junction into the two port networks. So, one terminal has to be made common here. So, therefore, that is why it results in three uh, co configuration of bipolar junction transistors. So, therefore, here you can see that these are the okay, emitter we have got as the input and collector as the in output and therefore, in this case the base is common okay, with reference to both input as well as the output here. So, similarly, in case of this uh, common uh, the emitter configuration, you can see that the emitter is common to both input that is base here and uh, with reference to output that is the collector. Similarly, in this particular uh, okay, circuit diagram, you can see that the uh, common collector configuration, collector is common with reference to both uh, input that is base and the uh, output that is emitter there. Now, let us see or the in detail the common base configuration of bipolar junction transistor. Here we are considered an N p n transistor. So, this n acts as the emitter and uh, the middle layer it acts as the base and this extreme uh, right layer n layer acts as the collector there. So, in this case you can see that emitter that is n layer is connected to the negative terminal of the B B B with reference to base. So, therefore, emitter base junction is forward bias whereas, the collector base junction that is collector means this n ok extreme right n it is connected to the positive tunnel of the VCC with reference to the base and therefore, this will be reverse bias. So, please note that in common base ter terminology or common base configuration of BZT the base is common to both input and output. Input here is emitter and output will be the collector there. So, base is usually the terminal closest to or uh, at ground potential that is why here you can see that. So, base is maintained at the ground potential here and also you can note on that all current directions in BZT will refer to conventional flow that is the conventional direction of whole flow that means it is against the direction of the electron flow and the arrows in all electronic uh, symbols have a direction defined by this convention only that is conventional current flow here. Note that the applied biasing uh, are such as to establish the current in the direction indicated for each branch. Therefore, here you can see that we have a common base configuration for both PNP as well as the NPN transistor. In PNP transistor, you can see that this P acts as the emitter, this N acts as the base layer, whereas this P acts as the collector layer. Therefore, in this case, so this uh, P is connected to positive terminal of the VE with reference to base. So, this is forward bias, whereas in this the uh, out, output junction that is 
P layer that is collector, it is connected to negative terminal of the VCC with reference to the base. So, this will be reverse pass. So, similarly, in case of NPN, the uh, emitter base junction is uh, forward bias by connecting N layer that is emitter layer to the negative terminal of VE right with reference to the base and uh, on the other side the collector that is nothing but extreme right N layer it is connected to positive terminal of the VCC with reference to the base here and therefore it is reverse bias that is what it can be seen here over okay in this common base configuration symbolic notation. So, uh, we need to write in order to explain the behavior of common base amplifier we need to study right uh, the both input uh, and output uh, characteristics of the BJT in common base configuration input because since the base is common to both input as well as the output ok. So, this is called as common base configuration here in this common base configuration emitter acts as the input uh, uh, terminal whereas, the collector acts as the, the output terminal here. So, this is whatever you can see on the left side of this line shows the input characteristics of the common base uh, transistor common base configuration of the BZT. So, wherein uh, graph is plotted between V B E that is input voltage uh, versus I E that is input uh, current keeping the V C B constant that is V C B means the output voltage here. Similarly, you can see on the on the right side of this slide uh, output characteristics wherein the V C B that is the output voltage that is plotted against the output current that is I C keeping the input voltage that is I E constant there. So, now let us uh, take up one by one characteristics and we shall see right how we can able to analyze the input characteristics. So, this particular slide shows the input characteristics of the bipolar junction transistor wherein V B E that is input voltage is plotted ok against the emitter current that is in the input current input voltage versus input current keeping output voltage constant here. So, that is nothing but the input characteristics of the common base configuration of BZT here. So, what you can uh, what is evident from this? So, uh, you can note that. So, the emitter base junction it is forward bias. So, therefore, the whatever the input characteristics of a common base configuration it is almost similar to that of the forward biased P n junction here. So, therefore, here you can see that uh, until the V e B V B e that is the uh, input voltage uh, becomes uh, equal to the th cutting voltage ok the current will be 0 here. When V b e exceeds the cutting voltage cutting voltage as you know that it is 0 0.7 volt in case of silicon transistor it is 0 0.3 volts in case of the uh, germanium transistors. So, once the input voltage V b e exceeds the cutting voltage or threshold voltage then so the current will start flowing through the the transistor there. So, and another point you can note down that. So, uh, for a given uh, V b e more current flows through uh, flows when higher levels of V c b are used here. So, if you uh, uh, if you want to know this particularly just uh, let us see. So, here you can see that. So, whatever for constant if you take up uh, one vertical this one. So, you can see that for a constant uh, um, a fixed value of V b e if you draw for let us assume that V b e given is 0 0.8 uh, volts. So, therefore, corresponding to this V b e if you draw a line here let me see the line at work. Yeah. So, friends you can note on that 
one conclusion what you can draw is when emitter based junction that is input junction is forward bias the input characteristics are essentially similar to that of forward bias pn junction that is what you can I say. So, until the V b becomes equal to the cutting voltage or threshold voltage the current will be 0 when it exceeds the cutting voltage the current will start flowing through this. So, other point what you can note down here. So, is with regard to for a given V b if you draw a constant okay, let us uh, assume that we given V b is okay, the is 0 0.8 volts and uh, uh, if you write corresponding if you draw the emitter current you can see that what, what you can observe for a given V b more current that is I e flows right. Uh, when higher levels of VCB. So, therefore, whenever this uh, VCB increases okay, and for a given fixed value of uh, the VBE, whenever the VCB increases from 1 volt to 20 volts correspondingly the emitter current increases. The reason being is that VCB as you know that it is a reverse bias applied across the collector base junction. So, therefore, whenever the collector base junction uh, increases the width of the depletion la layer existing across the output junction increases and uh, therefore, so what happens the uh, the more the depletion layer that is existing across the output junction will penetrate into the base layer and therefore, uh, naturally the more uh, uh, the uh, uh, more of the majority charge carrier they will be able to swept into the collector junction there. So, now let us see okay, one by one uh, So, now let us see the output characteristics of the common base configuration. Once again as you note as you can note down here it uh, consists of three reason one is active reason it is defined by the biasing element because for two uh, to in order to have the BZT in active reason we need to have right the emitter base junction in the forward bias collector base junction in the reverse bias here. So, then uh, the transistor is said to be the active reason whereas, in case of that cutoff you can see that the reason whatever reason you can see here okay, in the blue reason that is below the collector current I see uh, current of 0 ampere that is nothing but the cutoff region and whatever region you can see here on the okay to the uh, left of VCB equal to 0. So, that region we call it as the saturation region there. So, once again here uh, what you can note on for each fixed level of I e. So, okay, I c is almost equal to I e there. So, therefore, uh, that means okay, I c that means I c appears to remain constant when VCB increase that means, so I c the, uh, the output current it is independent of the output voltage that is uh, reverse bias applied across the, the collector base junction here. So, the because you can see this right when, uh, uh, when this V c b is increased from 0 to 25 right you cannot find right almost this cur the current curves almost it is flat. So, there is no much variation here that means what the the increase in VCB is not having much effect on the output current that is collector current. So, it is the re, uh, but however, if uh, VCB exceeds the 25 volts, so there might be a breakdown here and, and uh, because of this uh, breakdown mechanism what happens the collector uh, uh, current output current suddenly decreases here. So, it happens because mainly because at uh, whenever this VCB exceeds the 25 volts. So, these uh, both the depletion region one existing across the input junction other existing across the output, action, uh, output junction they cl get close together and therefore, a large current flows through the device here. And uh, another point what you can note on here at this edge here at this whenever V c b is reduced to 0 I c still flows here at this point we at this point you can see that when V c b for corresponding to V c b 0 still there is a finite amount of the collector current is flowing. The reason being because even uh, okay, when there is no bias across the collector base junction V c b 0 means what there is no bias across reverse bias across this for V c b equal to 0 there is no bias, but still you know that under 
the no bias condition still there is a depletion layer exist across the collector junction and this will because of this okay so there will be a, a current flowing through the the bzt uh, device here and uh, in order to reduce this collector current to zero here if you want to reduce it to, to zero what you need to do we need to forward bias okay the collector based junction we have to reverse the potential the the uh, terminals of the uh, mainly the voltage supply there power supply if you able to reverse interchange the terminals of this so then accordingly the collector based junction will be forward bias and what happens the collector junction will reduce us to zero there so this is the okay three reason what we are defined in case of the common base configuration one is active reason saturation and cutoff reason active reason you know that okay the input junction is forward bias the output junction is reverse bias okay and uh, here ic okay uh, it, it do not depend on the vcb here because we are having a, a flat cur current uh, graph or a plot so there so therefore this is the suitable reason right that is uh, being used for okay transistor as an amplifier there whereas in saturation reason in both input and output junctions are for bias so and also you know that okay whenever there is a ch small change in vcb and it will cause a big right uh, changes in the output current that is collector current here so therefore this reason will be the to the left of uh, the uh, vcb equal to zero so whatever reason is there and that is called as the saturation reason whereas the cutoff reason is the reason below the line or below the uh, current uh, uh, graph of uh, i equal to 0 here in this case both input and output junctions are reverse bias and uh, uh, no current flows whenever the device in, in cutoff reason or maybe only a leakage current may be flowing which is in the range of almost micro amperes there so the output characteristics clearly indicate the first approximation to the relationship between i and ic in the active reason and uh, is given by ic is is approximately equal to ie here so here we have since ib is very very small in the range of microampere we have neglected it so assume that ic is equal to ie there and also you can note that the once a transistor is in the on state the base emitter voltage will be assumed to be vb equal to 0.7 volts as you can see from this particular graph there so the in the dc mode the level of the collector current and emitter current due to majority carriers are related by a quantity called as alpha dc this is as i told you that it is nothing but the common base uh, dc uh, current gain that is the alpha dc it is defined as the ratio of output current that is ic to the input current that is ie there so therefore using this relation we can write ic equal to alpha dc times of ie plus icbo icbo as i told you that it is a correct uh, the current that flows from collector to base right by keeping emitter open here so therefore uh, since this uh, icbo is very very negligibly small we can neglect it and therefore we, what we can uh, deduce is that ic is equal to alpha dc times of ie here whereas apart from this uh, common base uh, dc current gain we have got the common base ac current gain that is called as alpha ac which is defined as the ratio of change in output current that is ic delta ic and to the change in uh, uh, the input current that is delta ie there so therefore alpha it is uh, a common base uh, dc current gain which is a ratio uh, which uh, is a measure of the current that flows from the input to the output here that is emitted to the the collector here so usually the alpha dc ranges from 0 0.9 to 0 0.998 here so that's what this particular slide shows the biasing proper biasing of cb configuration in active reason by approximating ic equal to i here since we are neglected ib I B there so you can see that the base terminal is okay uh, floating so therefore with this arrangement we can able to have the uh, cb configuration in active reason there so and uh, this in cb configuration you can see that okay here uh, this particular slide shows a pnp transistor working as an amplifier right with the applied ac signal of 200 millivolts okay 
and uh, the input resistances are most very very less in the range of 20 ohms and output resistance is very very high usually for CB configuration it is high that is 100 kilo ohm there. This is the input current, this is the output current that is designated as the IL or the nothing but the I, IC there. So, this is what you can see the, the right how a transistor in CB configuration can act as an amplifier. So, here we are considered an NPN transistor okay, and uh, this middle layer acts as the base here okay, and finally, this uh, particular this end layer acts as the input that is emitter and this extreme end bottom most end layer acts as the collector that acts as the output here which is connected to the speaker here. So, whenever we speak hello, so that will be uh, the that signal will be connect, uh, the connect uh, converted into electrical signal and uh, that will be ok, its strength will be enhanced using a, uh, the transistor and that will be fed to the speaker which is acts as a uh, load here. So, to conclude, so we have seen in this particular session right, we could be able to derive the expression uh, for the various current that is one is uh, we know that I equal to summation of the base current and collector current and also we know that the DC alpha DC is nothing but the ratio of output current by the input current that is IC by IE and from this we can see that IC is equal to alpha DC times of IE there. So, here from the equation if you substitute equation 1 into equation 2 we will get IC equal to alpha and after rearranging we will get IC equal to alpha DC divided by 1 minus alpha DC into IB there. So, this finally, we can arrive at this uh, can be equated to IC equal to beta DC into IB there. Similarly, we came to know about three uh, uh, basic configuration of single stage BZT amplifier ok. As I told you that to fit into this uh, BZT into a two port network. So, one terminal has to be made common therefore, if base is made common with reference to both input and output that will you will get a common base. If you emitter is common with reference to the both input and output it will be a common emitter configuration otherwise in case of collector is common to both input and output then it will we write it gives rise to common collector configuration. And also we discussed about the input and output characteristics of the common base configuration from this input characteristics. Input characteristics is a plot of VBE that is input voltage versus the input current that is IE there keeping the output voltage constant here. So, one thing what in what is evident from this, this character 6 it is similar to the forward biased p n junction and another uh, co uh, conclusion what you can make from this character 6 is that for a fixed value of V B E, ok, whenever the V C B increases. So, correspondingly I E will also increase here, it is mainly because of the fact that whenever v there is an increase in V C B then correspondingly the width of the depletion layer existing across the collector junction increases and uh, it will penetrate more into the base region and therefore, so more ok uh, majority carriers will be can be swept into the collector and thereby increasing the uh, IE current here. So, this is what it is nothing but the output characteristics, this is the plot of uh, the uh, VCB versus I IC that is uh, output voltage versus IC. Uh, output current keeping the IE constant there. So, one thing is that, so irrespective of variation in VCB there is no effect on the IC there. So, because this particular reason is active reason it is almost uh, ok keeping con the constant here and also usually you know that ok active reason is being used for ok uh, amplification purpose because of the fact that because this is a linear reason and another is that there is a equal distance exist between these current curves here and uh, this uh, equidistance current curves gives rise to faithful amplification that is one important feature of this active region there. So, that is all. Thank you.